Welcome back, everybody. Before we get started today, we've got a couple of housekeeping things. We have made some changes inside the academy, specifically to the community portion. Yeah. In the past, we've had, um, we've used Facebook, and it's worked out all right. Yes, yeah, because cool, um, if you've never looked at our uh, sales page or anything about the academy, um, we have courses and we have coaching in there and we also have a community so you can talk to other landscapers. We don't ever pretend to know anything and everything and we think it's really great for everybody to kind of interact with each other. And so we were typically doing that through a Facebook group. Yeah, and it's always nice to be able to talk to other landscapers, get their ideas. Or sometimes you have, you know, numbers that you have in your business. You may not want to put it out to like a public. Like the free, free well, Facebook like we groups. have the free landscaping business owners group. That group is really a lot. There's a lot of people in there. You might not want that information out to God and everybody. So, yeah. yeah. So we have a private group just for the um, the business owners that are really invested on making really big strides in their business. And these mm -hmm. are the people that will actually give you like good advice, not yep. weird advice. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people give really weird advice. Yeah. So we've actually uh, found this other uh, bit of software called Heartbeat, and uh, we're really excited about it because it's, it's kind of a distraction-free zone in here. You're not getting bombarded with ads and other pop-ups. And the thing that we were finding with Facebook, and this is something we're seeing in, in um, business pages for Facebook too, like things get overlooked. So if you post something on your Facebook page, People, well, people doesn't, they don't see it all the time. If you use a social media platform for your community, you're at the mercy of Facebook mm -hmm. pushing your information out to people. You could yeah. log into Facebook and the Million Dollar, um, if you don't specifically go to the Million Dollar Academy group, it may not ever show up in your feed. Yeah, it could easily just get glossed over. Like I said, same thing that can happen in your business page, same thing was happening with ours. So some of yes. our members weren't even seeing where people would post a question, they weren't seeing it. Mm -hmm. So this new platform will actually... It's know, an app that you yeah, can use a, on your phone. Um, you can post a question there, and if you don't see it necessarily right away, it will actually send emails out at the beginning of the week saying, hey, these people ask questions. You can kind of go in there, and it's just mm -hmm. nice to get a little reminder like, oh, hey. It is nice, because I'm in some other groups that use a similar platform called Circle. They're all... They're all same. basically the same. <laughs> but anyway, it is nice because then I can just go to the app and then I can look. I'm like, oh, what are people ch in there chatting about today? Or, like, yeah, like Scott said, I do get emails, especially like if I put something, if I put a question in and somebody comments on it, I've got the notifications turned on that it will email me. So mm -hmm. I know if somebody has um, answered it because sometimes I kind of forget that I put, I put a question and then I get busy with my day and I don't think about it. But then when I check my email, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to go back and. Mm -hmm. uh, and look at it. Yeah, the other nice thing too is we're excited about is we're going to be able to put courses on there. Mm -hmm. um, so Katie's going to do some stuff on mindset stuff eventually in there. Get yeah, I'm going. getting a lot of that together because just I've had my own little mindset struggle. I don't know if those are the right words, mm -hmm. but, but the past six months it kind of really it just got really hard. Uh, and so I took a deep dive into just getting my own head on a little straighter. Um, and so I'm just happy to share that with everybody because I figure if, if it's stuff that I'm thinking about and it's affecting me, it's probably affecting everybody else as well. And the other thing too we're going to do is uh, in the past in our private community, we had our Green Growth Accelerate courses. So those courses are in Facebook, but they're hard to find because they're listed way back. So we can actually take those, we're gonna download them and we're gonna put them in the heartbeat as their own courses. Yeah, so. It's just gonna all be a little more just, user friendly. Yeah. It's hopefully gonna be great. Give everybody an, an opportunity to chat, yep. learn it's, a few things. And uh, like, like Scott said, just be more targeted. And so it won't get lost in that Facebook shuffle. Yeah, so that's, we're very excited about it. It's just in the beginning stages. We're still transitioning from Facebook to Yes, we haven't heartbeat. necessarily put out a ton of stuff yet. We're just, we're, we're easing into it. We're yeah. doing it a little bit dirty. We don't exactly <laughs> know what we're doing, but we're going to do it. Yeah. So we're getting it done. Um, so yeah, so FYI, um, the Academy, we are still taking on um, people. Uh, we do have some one-on-one -on -one coaching spots and still open. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're interested in any of that, just check out our webpage uh, and you can learn more about it there. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so for today's episode, we're actually going to talk about um, a book I listened to. We just got back from vacation. We drove home like two days ago. Mm -hmm. And Scott was listening to a webinar um, about, like, is a recession coming? What do we do if a recession's coming? Stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he was listening to that, and I decided, I was like, do I want to listen to his webinar? No. <laughs> 
Um, but I took the opportunity to uh, go into my list of books. I have a I have a whole list of books that I want to read and or listen to. Um, and so I took the opportunity to go ahead and snag one of the books that I've been wanting to listen to. So I listened to a book called Peaks and Valleys. Um, it's by the same author who wrote the book Who Moved My Cheese, which is another book that I like. And these are just little teeny tiny short books. They, they just like kind of tell little stories to get their point across. Spencer Johnson is the author. So anyway, so today we're just going to talk a little bit um, just like like the main key points that I picked out of the Peaks and Valleys book by Spencer Johnston. I don't want it to be like this big long book report. <laughs> um, so we'll just talk about like some of the key things that I got from it. You got to get in front of the class and read the book report. I used to, I loved doing book reports because I like books, and so I never minded doing that. So it was not a problem. I actually read extra books, so it was it was not a problem. <laughs> All right, here's a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. The only app every landscaper needs. Company Cam makes it dead simple to communicate, document, and problem solve with guys in the field, no matter where you are. Company Cam brings documentation, communication, and liability protection together in one simple, easy to use app for you and your entire team. Take unlimited photos and videos, share custom reports, create flawless before and afters, and even communicate and share progress with homeowners with galleries and project timelines, all from your smartphone. Company Cam, the only app every landscaper needs. Check it out at companycam.com slash million or in your app store. If you run a landscape or lawn care business, you know the work never ends. There's customer service, hiring staff, mounds of paperwork. The to-do list just goes on and on. Plus, you still need to do the actual work that pays your bills. Running your entire business with pen and paper alone is just hard and really plain messy. You know you need a better system to stay on top of everything so nothing falls to the cracks. Jobber is a mobile and online app that helps keep your business organized and looking more professional than ever. With Jobber, you can quote jobs, schedule your crews, send out invoices, accept payments online all in one place. You won't know how you ran your business without it. Jobber offers free one-on-one -on -one coaching to help get you started, and there's no software experience needed. Get paid on time, go paperless, and impress your customers. Try it for free today at getjobber.com forward slash MDL. This podcast is brought to you by Busy Busy. Busy Busy is so simple to use, and it's the most reliable GPS time tracking app on the market. And the best part is, it was built for landscapers. Busy Busy's founder created Busy Busy because he owns multiple construction companies and needed to understand better which projects were making him money and which projects were killing him. Payroll is the highest variable cost in the project, so you better be tracking it. Busy Busy does this better than anyone else. So download Busy Busy today, and don't forget to mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast to get three free months. We want to take a quick second to tell you about our friends over at Cycle CPA. I can't even express to you how important it is to have a good accountant on your side. You know you want accurate bookkeeping and financial statements every month. Instead, you're often left with limited time to focus on the accounting side of your business and no reports to show for it. At Cycle CPA, the landscaping accountants, they not only handle the bookkeeping, but also provide landscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA has a team of landscaping accountants available to provide anything from bookkeeping to CFO services. Visit CycleCPA.com and for $100 off, mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast. If you want to get the lead you want and turn your current clients into raving fans, then you need to try Send Gym. They've created an exclusive offer just for our listeners. If you sign up today, you can get your first month for just $2. So if you haven't already, go to sendjim.io forward slash MDL, where you can get even more exclusive deals just for Million Dollar Landscaper podcast listeners. That's sendjim.io forward slash MDL and take advantage of these awesome deals today. Okay, back to the book, Peaks and Valleys by Spencer Johnson. Um, it, like I said, it tells like a little story. It's about the story who, um, a guy who lives in a valley and he meets this, you know, wise guy who's up on not, not, not like wise guy isn't like, hey, you got a wise guy, <laughs> not, not that kind of wise guy, like, you know, like a, a the, the enlightened, you know, happy old guy that you think of that would like live on the top of a mountain. Um, and so then he learns, you know, from this 
older gentleman, um, just about Peaks Valley's life, everything. Um, anyway, so, but the moral of the story is that like, it, you know, everybody's gonna have your ups and downs. You're gonna have your peaks and you're gonna have your valleys. Every, every day's not gonna be a peak. Um, and that's okay, because that's just how life goes. <laughs> uh, and these peaks and valleys are actually really important um, because it can give you like a sense of balance in your life and a sense of appreciation. If you, if you don't have the valleys, then you don't appreciate the peaks and vice versa. You know, it's kind of like, well, or at least around here, you know, the, the long, cold, hard winters make us appreciate these hot that's summer days. Very true. So stuff very like true. that. So that was kind of like the basic gist of it. Um, we also... We kind of experienced this on our vacation a little bit too, I guess. Um, we <laughs> we did okay. We mentioned in the intro that we were just on vacation. We had a few valleys on our we trip. Did. It was supposed to be a five and a half hour trip. Yep. It took twelve. Yep. <laughs> because we had two blown out tires on our. We yeah. were camping. We were yeah. pulling our travel trailer. Yeah. And yeah. so we did. We blew our first tire on the trailer before we even left our county. We yep. were like yeah, was, one town away yep. uh, from where crazy. we live. Yeah. Uh, so so. Then, then we changed that. I put the spare tire on that's never been used before. Drove less than 100 miles, and boom, same tire that blew out the front, or not the same tire, but the same position. Same tire location. Blew out again. Yes. No, th nothing was like in there blocking or hitting it or something like that. But it was just the cheap. Well, tires. these are cheap <laughs> tires that came with the RV. Um, anyway, but we persisted and we got through. So we had we had a few valleys on our way. Yeah, we might. <laughs> We should maybe do a podcast about the, a whole separate one about perseverance and because, okay, now we're getting a little bit off track, but funny little sidebar. I, when I was retelling this story to like friends and my family of what happened, I had more than one person ask me, like, they're like, you didn't just turn around and come home. And we're like, no, it like literally never crossed our mind to just turn around and come home. So Scott and I, I think just naturally can hit valleys and just work through them and it wasn't just necessarily the tire that was issued the, oh, the problem more so was yeah. that it ripped out all the electric like for our, one of the slide outs our camper has a slide out it ripped out the electric for our, our refrigerator mm -hmm. a microwave um oh it lights. tore up the hole underneath yeah. of the camper it yeah, like oh, ripped yeah. stuff out like it was it was literally wrapped around the tires the wires yes were, this so. wasn't just like oh we got a flat yeah, yeah I guess it was, that, it was that, a, that bit of information is important bigger so issues we, and then scott <laughs> spent an entire day of our vacation repairing repairing it and we were yeah the day we traveled we we had left here like i said it was supposed to be about a five and a half hour trip it ended up being like 12 hours and so yeah and then we stayed up till like two in the morning working on it just like so yeah <laughs> so anyway fun times we worked through some valleys and so i guess peaks and peaks and valleys can happen over the i guess any course of time over the okay. course of our trip we had a few valleys okay. but so, um wow we really got off on a tangent that's okay <laughs> that's um w when i was listening to this book like i said i was listening to it in in a broader context of like maybe there's an upcoming like recession mm -hmm. so gotcha. um but one of the first key takeaways I got from this book was to um, keep in mind that what is a peak today could be a valley in the future. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people kind of can get caught up being not happy where they are if they think they're in a valley. Mm -hmm. But think of when you started your business. Uh, like think back to like that first time that you, you had like an entire week's worth of work booked. You were probably flying high. You were probably excited. You were happy to have that work. You were like, look at this. I can do this. Oh my gosh. I've got a whole week's worth of work booked up. This is amazing. Think of, how, think of how happy you were. But if that happened now, like maybe you're a couple years into your business and you only have a week's worth of work booked out, <laughs> you're, you're like, oh crap. Oh my yeah. gosh. We're gonna, what, I'm gonna fail. What's going on? Da, da, yeah. da, da, da. So, um, just remember that yesterday's peaks are today's valleys. And so if you kind of, if you think you're in one of these valleys, don't automatically just panic um, because you're not where you think you should be or things aren't going like where you, how you wanted them to go. Just take that m quick moment to just like stop. Don't panic, relax. Don't compare yourself to what you, where you think you should be at. Compare yourself to where you came from. And, and I'm not saying that that doesn't mean you don't need to go book work in this instance. Do you, you're going to need to go book some more work. But just remember that where you are right now at one point in your life was a huge peak. 
And so, and you survived it and you made it and you'll survive it and you'll make it again. And this goes right along the lines of what we were talking about. If if a recession would hit, Mm -hmm. this could be exact fall in the same thing. Like right now, actually we're on a webinar the other day with uh, Cycle CPA. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, we had a discussion about this and it was part of it was a recession and possible recession coming. And one of the person actually described like the times right now almost gluttonous. Like they said, it's like there's so much work they have right now mm-hmm. that if that comes, recession comes, you know, how, how should they be prepared? That became a whole discussion itself. But the, how to be prepared for that if there's not that much work and you're not getting the work or the, you know, profits and money coming in like you are right now. So, mm-hmm. Um, well, that's this ties right into um, the next thing that I wanted to do. Next, I'm just going to read you a couple of my favorite quotes from the book, and then we can kind of tie it into where okay. Scott was going a little bit there. Uh, so the first quote is, The errors you make in today's good times create tomorrow's bad times, and the wise things you do in today's bad times create tomorrow's good times. No, that's a little bit wordy. Stop I mean, and listen to it. And re- <laughs> yeah, listen to that again if you need to. Then the second quote is, the most common reason you leave a peak too soon is arrogance masquerading as confidence, and the most common reason you stay in a valley too long is fear masquerading as comfort. Mm -hmm. So as I was listening to this, it kind of really, the the takeaway I got from it was um, from that, the errors you make in today's good times create tomorrow's bad times. It goes back to that gluttony. There is so much work right now that you can actually out hustle bad business practices. Okay. There's enough work that even if you're estimating as garbage and you are not recouping your numbers and you don't know your numbers, there's enough work around that you're probably still doing okay because yeah. you can out hustle your you, can. Your, you, you can. can you can out hustle it. We did this for years. That's how we kept moving and just ah we'll Absolutely. work more and work harder and it yeah yeah that so, kept us afloat. We weren't making the money like we should have been but Right, but, but we could keep like them. way back, rewind, you know, before the 2008 housing boom, this is kind of where we were. Okay. We were, there was, we were working with a lot of builders and there was so much um, new housing going up in this area. We were able to just have work and have work and have yeah. work. It didn't really matter that we were a little bit <laughs> bad well, at the we, business and the things. We would literally go in and do whole subdivisions of houses. Like this builder had bought the subdivision, that his, it was all his mm-hmm. houses. We'd had house after house after house. Right. So it is easy to be, it's easy to be arrogant um, and and um, it be in that peak and be arrogant and be like, Psh, I got it together, look at me, I'm cranking out a subdivision's worth of stuff. Yeah. I'm making money hand over fist, I'm fine. Um, so that was really the takeaway I got from that is, is don't, don't get arrogant in these good times. Uh, that does, just because you are in a good spot, that doesn't mean that you don't need to know your numbers. That yeah. doesn't mean that you don't need to dig in and work on your business because, um, because then, as it says, uh, you know, uh, the errors you make in today's good times create tomorrow's bad times. So if you make the error of not working on your business, not knowing your numbers, not owing all of those things, uh, those are the things that are going to create bad times. <laughs> if a recession does come, a recession doesn't have to be a valley for you. But if you <laughs> if you don't <laughs> correct yourself and you're arrogant and you don't learn your business now, yep. then that it's, could be a real slap in the face if a recession does get here. And it, it'll be 10 times harder in that recession because you're already going to be stressed out with not having the money coming in or not having the work or workers or whatever it is mm-hmm. that your mind's not going to be able to focus. So like right now, it's a perfect time, like Katie said, to, to mm-hmm. step back, look at your numbers, look at your efficiencies, your productions, all that stuff. Look at it now. And have it corrected before the time hits. Yeah, because the second part of that sentence is, and the wise things you do in today's bad times create tomorrow's good times. Mm-hmm. So, if the worst thing, if if the if if your today's bad times are just, oh, that job didn't go so great, or oh, I don't think I made enough on that, use that as a catalyst to figure out what wrong and correct it now. Because that's, if if that's the worst thing that's going on for you right now, then you're in a pretty good place. Mm-hmm. So use that so well, you don't, like Scott said be even worse off and i have changed my focus over time and my energy to like looking at everything and figuring out where we can change or what we can do better and everything everything like if you're doing a landscape job okay after the job's over what did we do that was great what didn't go so great how can we improve that what didn't go so great you know whether they're mm-hmm. making the crews more efficient or giving them more information to the crews whatever it is mm-hmm. there's always something that can be improved and, and work on it and it's yeah well, and 
it just so happens that I've, I think I have numbers on the brain because we are revamping a lot of the numbers courses that we have inside the academy because that is the number one question we get asked. It's the number one problem people have. Yeah. So we've made the courses even easier um, and quicker to use. Uh, we like our estimating spreadsheets and all of that kind of yeah. stuff um, because we don't, like, we just, I just don't want that, I, they use the word arrogance. We just, I don't want people to get stuck in that arrogance and not get their numbers all dialed in and not be able to do this if this recession comes up. So like if you ever thought about joining our academy, um, either with the one-on-one -on -one coaching with Scott or, e or even just the group coaching, the courses are all still in there. You yep. don't have to pay for one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can, you can totally do this on your own. Um, I just really, really want people to go ahead and do that now while times are still good, while you got money and coming in and you can do this because you don't want to be in a valley when it's like <laughs> you're, you're already low and then, you know, dirt and rain are falling in on top of you <laughs> making it, and making it even worse for you. Um, because then the other quote was the most common reason you'll stay in a valley too long is fear uh, masquerading as comfort. Because if you, if you're, if you stay comfortable with your poor estimating system that you're using right now or whatever bad business practices that you have right now, you, it's easy to be comfortable with them now because things are good. But if you stay comfortable with those when things are bad, then you're going to be in that valley way longer than you need to be. A good example of this is taking materials and multiplying, multiplying by two. That's this, like <laughs> well, you were in a discussion in the free Facebook yeah. group recently with someone who was like, oh, yeah, I've got my stuff covered. I'm, I'm multiplying things by two and doing this and doing like weird that's not a thing like that is well it's an antiquated practice i yes. think back in the day that was what people did maybe this when is, they didn't know better the funny thing is that's exactly what we did 20 plus years ago and i remember at one point my dad said uh, bump it up to 2.2 or 2.3 which now. he was just making up yeah. mind you there yeah. was no this nothing is, behind this, is the this same thing 20 years ago so how can prices be the same if it was 20 The world is not, not the same as no. it was 20 years ago. No. So if it was marginally good information then, it's definitely bad information now. I don't even know that it was marginally good now. I think he got that from working in landscaping nursery retail. Yeah. That's where I think that originated. Yeah. But please, I guess I'm just imploring you all to not, <laughs> that I know times are good right now and that is great. And I'm happy that everybody has more work than they can even keep on their plates. But don't get arrogant and don't get too comfortable because if a recession is coming, the hard work that you put in to your business now is going to pay off. Mm -hmm. Because think of how many people aren't going to take the time to do it. How many people won't join the academy because they're like, oh, I can't afford it. Oh, I don't have time. Um, every other excuse that there is under the sun. Uh, trust me, that that little fee that you pay for the academy well, is going to... 10 times what you're going to be making like yes if you don't or if you do you know so you you have to take the time you have to put a little energy into it There's well you can't outsource your push-ups yeah. we can show you how to do it but you're going to have to put in the time and effort to do it yeah. for your business but we make it so damn simple in there like it's it's well yeah. yes you've up scott has updated the spreadsheets <laughs> to make them easier um because originally we just had in there the ones that we used and they yep. made sense to us obviously but we've refined them after um, and they're still coming out so they're done. yeah we've re <laughs> refined them over time as we've worked with people because the problems we had wasn't necessarily the ones everybody had but anyway we've learned from it and made yep. them better the point is we've learned from it and made it better yep. but no so i guess that's just my little soapbox that i'm gonna die on today <laughs> that, that's really what i got from that peaks like i said i went into the book with having a recession in mind. And so those quotes were really the ones that stood out for me um, that I really wanted to share because I thought that really made a lot of sense. It does. I'm actually going to have to read that book. Myself. It's a quick little book too. Um, like I, I listened to it. I listened to the audio book because like I said, we were traveling, so I didn't necessarily have a bunch of books with me, but I get books from the library. So I was able to just download the audio book and listen to it in like an hour. I was actually, I, I listened to Benjamin Hardy, one of Katie's favorite. Oh, he's, people. yeah, he, somebody else I follow. But he was actually talking about this book, so. Yes, I've heard, uh, I've heard of it more than once. Um, yeah, well, because the author, like I said, I love the book, Who Moved My Cheese. I've read that book probably 10 times. <laughs> um, and it's by the same, the Spencer Johnson, it's by the same author. So, nope, check it out. It's a good little book. Or qu it's a quick little listen, but mm -hmm. those were, that. that's, like I said, Going into it with a recession mindset, that's what I really got from it was don't let the arrogance um, of this current peak uh, set you up to stay in a valley longer than you need to be.
Very true. Okay. All right. Got you ready some for questions? Some interview questions? Okay. All right. Would you rather go 30 days without your phone or your entire life without dessert? I could probably go without dessert. You really could. You're yeah. very weird like that. No, I would absolutely give up my phone and then only eat dessert for the 30 <laughs> days that my phone was gone. Sorry. Is that not a... It wasn't one of the options, but that's what no. I would want to do. Uh, have you ever accidentally worn clothes with like the labels and the tags oh, yeah. still on yeah. them? I have wore jeans that had the little strip oh, on there sticker. that I, yeah, I didn't notice it. That's hilarious. I, I remember people pointing it out to me. That's funny. You take off like one and there's another one that you didn't catch. I usually wash my clothes before I wear them. Yeah, so. I usually do, but yeah, sometimes. Hey, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, would you rather spend a year living at a nudist colony or with an Amish community? Probably Amish. I, so I figured I knew you'd go Amish. Yeah. So you're like, I could learn from them. They could show yeah. me how to build a barn. You'd yeah. love it. I'd Pe be over whooping it up at the nudist colony. <laughs> <laughs> People make fun of me because I do stuff the old way sometimes they say. so. <laughs> yeah, so I figured. <laughs> yeah, you'd like it too. Yeah, yeah all the homemade food. The Amish mm -hmm. do have really good food. That's true. Well, we're in Indiana. There's Amish country not too far from here. The beef jerky is amazing. It is. <laughs> Sorry, it is. tangent. So, all right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us today. Hope you uh, great. Oh. Yes. I was, well, and like I said earlier, back to the peaks and the valleys, please. I implore you. We do. We still have openings for the academy. We have openings in both the group coaching and the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you want to dig into your numbers and get yourself a little bit recession-proof, now's the time to do it. I, I will say the people that do join the one-on-one, -on -one, they, they have a lot more access to me. So yeah, th there's not just, you're not just getting the one-on-one. -on -one if, you're, if you're going back and forth between yeah. what's the difference, why would I want to pick and it? And those people that are doing that and active in the community and active in everything we're doing are getting results much, much quicker. Yes. So. We can, we can, it's back to, you can't outsource your push-ups. We can lay it all out for you, but you, you mm -hmm. have to show up Put it in the put in the heart, soul, and time that it takes to get it done. But you can absolutely do it because yep. we've got people that are showing up and doing it, and yep. they're making great progress. Yeah. All so right. Definitely check it out. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.